the question comes up inevitably, I think, when you start to compare um, a particular level of guilt, a particular intensity of guilt, to something like a flogging, or perhaps uh, even worse, a feeling of drowning. Uh, guilt can get that bad, by the way. Um, what do we do then to deal with um, the issue of controlling our improper desires? Uh, in other words, um, if I am laying on the beach and I see the pretty girl walking by in her bikini and I know I can get away with anything I want, we've established that if I'm only refraining from assaulting her by the fear of the police, then I'm not really a particularly moral person. That, that dynamic there doesn't really make me a moral person. I think that the same goes for the issue of guilt. I really want to assault her, but something is holding me back. The only difference is this time it's in here. I've got uh, Ludovico's treatment from Clockwork Orange inside of me. There's some terrible feeling inside of my head that uh, is restraining me and keeping me from doing what I actually still want to do. And in fact, um, it creates an enormous amount of conflict inside of me. Guilt can do that. Guilt can really cause a raging torrent inside the head. Um, so I'm on the beach trying to relax, and the result is a raging torrent of conflicting impulses. Something in me wants to do something. Something in me wants to powerfully and somewhat ruthlessly restrain that want. I would say that we would have to back up even further. We would have to sort of to get beyond the stage of um, I guess we would call it um, discombobulating or traumatizing uh, me or self-traumatization I suppose as a means of self-control to dealing with and deconstructing the desires uh, in the first place. How do I deal with the fact that I want something and that want has to be controlled? Um, the want that I have, for example, on some level, or the want that I may have on some level, for what I see parading before me along the shoreline is enormous. <laughs> I'm a normally functioning human being, after all. I understand that I cannot just act on that impulse for so many reasons. Um, and those reasons are not always clear in my head. They're often subconscious. So I have to somehow stop. I have to interdict the action um, of me forcing myself upon this pretty young woman. Um, so I've, I've constructed self-controls. Um, or they've been constructed for me by my socialization. Um, but it creates tension. But there are people who lay on the beach near me who see the pretty girl walking by, pretty woman, and they just go, oh, isn't that nice? And they go back to their book or whatever. It's generally just a pleasant thing. What's the difference? Desire. Um, one person is sort of at the mercy of his or her desires and has to fight with them ferociously using whatever guilt or whatever weapons are at his or her disposal whereas the other person is not subject to desire in in the same way how do you do that how do you deal with 
endless desires, especially in a society, a modern Western society, that is essentially one gigantic desire generating machine. Um, any um, any contact with the media in any form at all these days, somebody's trying to get you to want something. Um, well, it's quite obvious that it's possible to deal with desire um, rather than trying to repress it with more guilt. How about dealing with it to try and so engineer it that the issue of inner conflict does not arise and you don't need to apply the bludgeon or the lash of, of guilt, of punishment, of extreme inner turmoil. Because again, that's all you're doing when you, when, when you reach for guilt, or when guilt reaches for you, I guess. Uh, it's coercion. In a, it's, it's a type of aversion therapy. It's even, one could say, it's torture. If it's at a certain level, it is indeed torture. It's the kind of torture that can traumatize you and wreck your sanity. So you have to sort of, I guess, create circumstances under which you don't require guilt as, as it were, a restraining hand. You have to sort of become that person that doesn't have to sort of summon the ogre to fight the other ogre inside of you, because now all you've got is an ogre fight inside of your head, I guess. Uh, crude metaphor. Uh, you've got the ogre of a desire that just wants to get out there and just be a savage, in the pejorative sense of the word, a savage. And you've got another ogre who's attempting to bludgeon that savage into behaving himself. Um, and the whole thing is creating so much noise up here that it's an overall extremely unpleasant circumstance. Um, you can actually have your, you know, your day ruined by just little desires that prop up in your attempt to control those desires. Um, how about you just get yourself in a situation where the desire does not arise. This is not something you can just snap your fingers and do. This takes years, if you ask me, of work. But I believe it to be possible. Um, I think that's how you make a good person. I don't think you can... I can't imagine how you could get somebody else to do this, um, let alone impose that sort of way of, of seeing things on somebody else. Again, we're going to have to have means of dealing with people that are disruptive. Um, there are going to be people who will be at the beach and will see what they see and just act on it in the most animalistic or worse than animalistic way imaginable, they will have to be physically dealt with. Um, but just the act of mentally coercing oneself isn't enough either, if you ask me. it It's, you're playing with fire when you do that. Um, the most important thing, if you ask me, is to, instead of interdicting the desire, if necessary, beating it down with a big knobby club in a lot of noise and fur flying everywhere, deal with the desire. Um, desire is a gigantic issue in and of itself. Um, and there's the butterfly effect for you. <laughs> desire. Um, controlling desire, uh, I think, is the key to dispensing with guilt. Um, and I think that controlling desire can have enormous uh, beneficial uh, side effects as well. <laughs> um, but again, controlling desire, 
that's a personal thing. I can't see how you can force anybody else to control their desire. Once you start acting on other people, I think there's no other option but to reach for the handcuffs and reach for the guilt and shame. Thank <laughs> you.